Now, India has been awaiting updates on the state of the 18 Indians who were on board the UK vessel when it was seized by Iran. Vion now brings you all the latest updates as sources have told Vion that the crew is safe and doing fine as they await the legal process to be completed. The visuals on your screen right now are the latest of the captured UK tanker Stena Impero. These are the first up close visuals of the tanker that has now become the focal point of a diplomatic storm. Now remember, the ship was captured by Iran on the charge that it had failed to respond to a distress call after hitting a fishing boat. There was confusion over the status of the Indian nationals on board, but our sources have confirmed that they are in a good state and are doing just fine. India's Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar has also called for the release of the Indian crew members on board this captured ship. The minister put out a tweet where he said his team at the Ministry of External Affairs is working hard to ensure the early release and repatriation of the 18 Indians. He said the Indian ministry is in constant touch with the embassy in Tehran and that further updates are awaited. All right, for more details, let's quickly go across uh, to... Ghanbar Naderi, who is a journalist from Tehran, he brings us all the latest on this news story. Uh, Mr. Naderi, I'd like to be begin by asking you what happens to the fate of these Indians which are on board of the seized UK tanker? How soon can we expect the formalities to expedite when it comes to the Indian uh, embassy in Tehran? Well, uh, uh, Iran and uh, India have great relations. I see no reason why these... Uh, the, the crew members are not going to be released. They are going to be released soon. The problem is the, the, the legal pro procedure that takes some time, and that's really uh, all, all, all I can say for the, for the time being. Because, as you know, the, 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 the crew uh, shut down the, uh, or turned off the transponder of the ship and, 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 and this posed a great danger to other shipping lanes uh, 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 around this uh, uh, British-owned ship. That's why... The Iranian forces had to take matters into their own hands and stop it from continuing to, towards its destination, which was uh, Saudi Arabia. So basically, they broke international maritime law and they have to face some tough questions by our judge. And that, that's all really. I mean, th there should be no attempt by any side to politicize this shipping accident because the ship also got involved in, in, in an accident uh, with, with another, another fishing boat because they didn't know that this huge ship was around. Right. All right. Mr. Naderi, a recording of the tense radio exchange uh, between uh, the Stena Impero tanker frigate and the Iranian vessels shows, you know, the shortcomings of armed escorts in protecting traffic. Uh, it also underscores the risk of direct confrontation between the country's militaries. What do you make of uh, this released audio clip? Well, I just talked to the... Managing director of Hormuz Gun Province's uh, ship, shipping line or organization. These are the ones that ask uh, Iranian forces to intervene and, and stop the ship from, from continuing its journey. Because as I told you, the ship was posing serious threats to other ships around and it, it had turned off the transponder. This doesn't mean that the Iranian forces don't have the necessary equipment to identify. It's quite the opposite. They had the, 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 the drones and, and, and the equipment to stop the ship on its track and that's precisely what they did. They didn't break international maritime law. Yes, I told you, there are some misunderstandings here, but, but all these things have to be sorted out through legal channels. We shouldn't, we should avoid politicizing these important issues because this has nothing to do with politicization or, or geopolitical interests of this or that country. All right, but politicization, as we all know, Mr. Nadeir, is going to take place because as we all know that the tensions in the Gulf are already soaring high. Do you think Iran is pairing diplomacy with military pushbacks? I think no country has any right whatsoever to, to undermine the stability and safety of the, the, the Persian Gulf and the Strait of Hormuz, through which hundreds of uh, oil tankers pass each and every day. So this one goes to Iran and uh, the UK at the same time. They have to act like at two adults. They have to sort out their differences through dialogue and, and, and negotiations. They should avoid undermining international law because this is not just about them. This is also about the interests 
of the region and beyond. So hopefully let's cross our fingers that they will act like two adults and they will sort out the, their differences through diplomacy because this volatile region has had so many wars, so many con confrontations uh, uh, over the past 40 years or so. And, and last thing right now people want is another escalation between Iran, the United States mm. and, and, and the United States. Mr. Nadevi, that also brings me... That. Right, that also brings me to my last um, question that, you know, Washington claims its recent military buildup in the Persian Gulf, including that aircraft carrier and the bomber task force, intends to reassure allies of its commitment to securing the region. How do you look at this entire military buildup by the United States in the region? Iran welcomes dialogue and cooperation when it comes to security of the region with other countries inside the region. I think it is not the business of the United States to be there, let alone send warships, aircraft carriers, or even drones and, and, and troops. Washington should stop, you know, escalating the situation and meddling in the regional affairs of other countries. Iran has already made it absolutely clear that it is more than willing to work with other countries in the region to ensure the security of this important uh, waterway. We don't need a, a, a superpower like the United States to be around over there because it, it, only, it only escalates the situation and it, it provokes some kind of confrontation with Iran. It, it, the United States doesn't care about the security of the region. It only cares about its own geopolitical interests. As Trump said, he wants to make uh, America great again and, and he's doing whatever he can to milk other countries in the region. And that's precisely what they are doing on the pretext of protecting these people from Iran. And, le le and guess what? They are, so far, they have been unable to right. offer any kind of security for the region. All right, Mr. Naderi, I can't help but ask you that, you know, since you were the one who met the crew members who are on board the ship, uh, we would like to have some uh, assurances coming in straight from the horse's mouth. What is the condition of those Indians who are on board the seized UK tanker? Well, the, 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 the ship is doing fine. The ship is safe. The crew are doing fine. I, I saw them uh, from, from a, a small boat outside the ship. They look bored, a little bit bored, and that's really all. I mean, I think uh, they, they know what they, they made a mistake by turning off the transponder, and that's all really. They haven't committed any crime. They will be soon released. They are just being asked some questions, and that's all really. I don't think that this, this stand-up between the UK and Iran is going to continue forever. The judge told me, the officials of the province told me that this uh, case, this particular shipping incident is going to be sorted right. out and resolved in less than a month. All right, Mr. Naderi, thank you so much for joining us here on We On and sharing all the latest on this news story. Um, the fact that you've shared your experience with us of meeting those Indians on board means tremendously to us and the country. Thank you so much.